Hello there, dear friends, and welcome once again to the Relaxed Fantasy Review. Today, we're continuing our series on the Humblewood Campaign module and talking about the races we find within. Today we're talking about another humble folk, one of the mammalian-style races, as opposed to the bird folk races, and we're talking about the hedge race, or the hedgehogs. In fact, they are hedgehog people. And, like many other races in Humblewood, come with an interesting set of abilities that really set them apart from the standard D&D races, but how do they work? We'll talk about their details in just a moment, but before we do, I'd like to let you know, Relax Fantasy Review has memberships. For just a dollar a month, you can support me here on YouTube and get a couple benefits. First, you get a little badge next to your name in the comments, letting folks know that you're a supporter, but also you get early access to my videos. I upload videos Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and I upload them a day early for members only. If that interests you, you can click the join button just below the video down there. I'd love to see you in the comments. And if it doesn't interest you, that's totally fine. Just liking, subscribing to the channel is a great way to support me. So thank you for watching my content here on YouTube. So the hedge race follow the old style of racial features because this book, Humblewood, actually came before Tasha's. So these races have a standard set of ability scores. Uh, hedges get a plus two to their charisma and a plus one to their wisdom. Charisma is the most common spellcasting um, spell ability and is infinitely useful in social situations. Wisdom, a little more specialized, but still an amazing um, ability score to have a bonus in. The plus two to Charisma, I give 10 out of 10. The plus one to Wisdom, I give 6 out of 10. The hedge folk are small. They are a small race. Now, be being small comes with its own benefits, but it has a little bit of inferiority to being a full medium-sized race most of the time. I say this is a 9 out of 10. And because they are a classic style uh, small race, they have a reduced movement speed of 25 feet. It's not the end of the world, but it is one of those things that can work against you in certain situations. So we're going to say an 8 out of 10 for that. But to make up for that, they get the natural burrower feature. Hedges have a 15-foot burrowing speed. Now, burrow speeds are really, really good. They allow you to avoid conflicts underground, making you really good at stealthing, as well as just allowing you to avoid being hit to any creature that doesn't also have a burrowing speed. You can hit and then just go underground. Um, it only can dig through soil, but the Humblewood campaign, and most D&D campaigns, that's pretty common. Like, unless you're standing on a rock city street, or, you know, a stone city street, or some sort of, like, metal fortress, or a cave or something, you're probably going to be able to dig down. I think that this is an incredible feature that you don't see on most D&D races, and I give it 10 out of 10 for sure. Now, you also have spiny quills. This is a natural armor state where you always have armor of 14 plus your dexterity modifier. That is a huge armor boost. It's actually better than mage armor and is naturally the same armor class as breastplate, assuming your dexterity was 10. And once you get past a dexterity of 14, it's better than most medium armors. It is phenomenally good. There's just one downside. Because of your spiny quills, you can't wear armor. If you choose the hedge race, you just can't wear armor. It's not an option. This is your armor class. If you try to strap on, you know, plate mail armor because you're a fighter or something like that, it won't work. There isn't even specialized armor that's built for you which is a bit unfortunate, but I'm okay with this race having this massive buff to its natural armor, because that's gonna be... With an 18 dexterity, you've got the same AC as full plate anyway, so as long as you lean into your dex, or even just make it a secondary stat, and you'll have decent armor class, and you can still use shields with this. So I'm giving this 9 out of 10. 
If it gave you the option to wear any armor, then it would just be busted 10 out of 10. But as it stands, it's just a really good natural armor. And then there is the curl up feature. This is similar to a turtle's ability to withdraw into their shell. You curl up, and as an action, this sets your AC to 19. And if any creature tries to hit you and it misses due to your increased armor class, it actually takes 2d4 damage from your quills. The downside to this is that you can't do anything while you're withdrawn. You can't attack or move. And if a creature does hit you, it actually knocks you prone. So this is very much a, um emergency use ability if you're about to die. Although even then I would suggest fighting back unless you have no chance of winning. So yeah, I'm going to say this is a 7 out of 10 feature. Not useless by any means, but certainly not the thing you're going to be using most of the time. If I'm at one hit points, but I know that I can potentially knock my enemy down, I'm not using this. Then you gain the Forest Magic feature. This grants you the Druid Craft cantrip just naturally, which is fine. That's a good cantrip to have. It's decent for utility purposes. And once per day, you get a free casting of the Animal Messenger spell, which, again, is a decent utility cantrip that I'm sure you can find uses for, especially in this campaign. Overall, these aren't incredible spells, but they're okay. I say that for... These two free spells, I give them 8 out of 10. Then you get the Speak with Bugs feature. This allows you to communicate simple ideas to bug-like beasts. So spiders and beetles and other things that you'd find that are insect-like or bug-like. Now, you can't communicate back with them, so they can't respond to you, but this is very similar to, like, a Furbolg's communicating with plants, or a Forest Gnome's communicating with animals. Just simple concepts. Get them to, like, lead you somewhere, or potentially even uh, give you basic information through their gestures. Um, insects is a little more specific than just beasts or plants. But I still think it's a worthwhile feature and will come in handy sometimes. I say 7 out of 10. And then finally, your languages. In the Humblewood world, the bird folk language is the equivalent of common, and hedges, in fact, do speak it. And then they have their own unique language, which is hedge. And the hedge folk are bilingual. You don't get to pick your languages, but I think that being bilingual is worth an 8 out of 10. And overall, I believe that the hedge folk are an 8 out of 10. They've got some cool abilities. Their burrow speeds, their armor, their natural magic is pretty good. Not to mention their natural charisma. There's a few stinkers, a few things in here that I think are a little questionable. Being a little slower and not being able to wear armor is definitely a downside. But I think 8 out of 10 is a valid uh, rating for them. I think that they lean very heavily into the charismatic, dexterous race that also is very in tune with nature. I think that's a great way to play the game, and it works really well in Humblewood. But you don't have to play them in Humblewood. With your DM's permission, you can lift them straight out and plop them in a regular D&D campaign. It wouldn't break the game. I think that you'd have a great time playing a hedgehog person. This has been the Relaxed Fantasy Review. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe down below. Have a look for the join button down there, as well as a link to the Deck of Many's Humblewood Campaign. It's a real old classic 5th edition book. I highly recommend you check it out for yourself. I promise you won't regret it. Have a good one, my friends.